All right, here we go again. Here we go again. Here we go again. Breaking bread, doing it the right way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go again. All right, all right, all right. Boy, get your word, get your pen, get your piece of paper. It's time to get busy. Yes, it is. Roll up your sleeve, roll up your sleeve. It's time to go to work, saints. It's time to go to work. Ah, what a great day it has been today, the weather permit. So you should have been outside with your feet up in the air, just lay back in that recliner, just enjoying this pleasurable weather. What an awesome God we serve to allow us to just take rest and restoration so that we can then just enjoy life. Sometimes we just need to take a break and just sit down and just, just think about it and just let it go. Let it go, let it go. In the name of Jesus, I just thank God for allowing us to be here tonight. I thank God for what he's going to do through us tonight. And I thank God for how he's going to bless us tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, saints, we serve a powerful God. We serve an awesome God. We serve a true and living God. Grab your paper, grab your pencil, get your word. It's time to go to work. Yep, roll up your sleeves. It's time to go to work. It's time to go to work. It's time to go to work into this kingdom. Jesus said, I didn't come in pervasive words, but I came in the power of God. And because he came in the power, Paul said, he came in the power, then we're going to demonstrate some of that power tonight. As we begin to flow through the word, through the word, through the word of the power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to send a shout out saying greeting to all, all of you. In the mighty name of Jesus, all of you, I want you to pat yourself on your back and say, you know what? I am somebody. You know what? I can be successful and I can do this. Pat yourself on the back and realize you are powerful. Okay, you had a few failures here and there, but that's all right. You're still allowed to get it right. Okay, pat yourself on the back and say, you know what? Today was kind of rough, but I made it through it. Pat yourself on the back and say, today was a good day. And I still made it through it. Pat yourself on the back and say, you know what? I, I met some trials and tribulations, you know, and pat yourself on the back saying you got through those trials and tribulations. But everybody didn't go through a trial and tribulation. They, some of us went through a joyful time. That being you, pat yourself on the back and say, God honored me today in the mighty name of Jesus. So we serve that kind of God. All right, all right, all right. Get your swords. Get your swords. Get your swords. It's time to go to work. Let's go to work, saints. Go with me in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you right now. God, I thank you for what you're about to do tonight. Thank you for how you're going to bless us. Thank you for how you're going to equip us in the mighty name of Jesus. This is the word, God, that you have ordained. This is the word that you purpose to be uh, uh, expelled tonight. This is the word that you purpose to go out tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. So thank you now. Thank you now, God, for what you're about to do in this atmosphere. Jesus, mighty name, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Good gracious, good gracious, good gracious. Boy, I feel that spirit tonight. What you say? All right, go to the book of Jeremiah. Go to Jeremiah, if you would, please. Go to the 17th chapter of the book of Jeremiah. Go to Jeremiah. Go to the 17th chapter of the book of Jeremiah. I want to talk to you just a little bit, tell you some things. Reiterate some things and uh, let you know that God is going to bless you. God has not forgot about you. He is going to work it out for you on your behalf in the mighty name of Jesus. Go to Jeremiah if you would. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, we serve an awesome God. Ooh, we serve a powerful God. So glad we chose him. Yeah, we know his word said he chose us, but I'm so glad we made a right decision and said, okay, Lord. I will do your will. And because of that, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I'm sorry, jumping like that. I'm trying to get my phone where I can see what's going on. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Thank you, God, for just blessing us and working it out for us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we in Jeremiah, and we're in the, 12, uh, the 17th chapter of Jeremiah. And here we have Jeremiah. You know, Jeremiah was a strong prophet. He was a minor prophet. But God used him in so many different ways. God used Jeremiah to talk to us, to let us understand the power of God. 
But he also used Jeremiah to let us understand that if you choose not to walk with God, there's some different things that you're going to have to understand that you will encounter. There's some things that you're going to have to understand that will be developed within your life. So Jeremiah was sent as this prophet to begin to help you and I to understand that if we choose God, we will always end up on the right side of this fence or on the right side of the circumstances or on the right side of this situation. We will always end up on the right side if we put our trust in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So tonight, saints, I want to talk to you a little bit about who you trust and why you trust him and, and all of this good things. But, but here in Jeremiah, the 17th chapter, verses 5 says, Thus say the Lord. This is Jeremiah, but he says the word came to Jeremiah, and the, the word came to Jeremiah from God. So he said, he wrote down, he says, Thus say the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart depart from the Lord, for he shall be like a shrub in the desert. Now, what am I saying? Now, we know that curse seems, seems to be a loss of power. Curse seems to be not able to be successful. Curse seems to be can't make it through this situation or this hard time. Curse simply means wickedness or sinful nature. So a sinful nature is the man who trusts in a man. Say it again, Pastor. A sinful nature is the man who trusts in man. Trust is a powerful word. And so if I had to give you a title today, the title would be The Power of Trust. The Power of Trust. Hmm. Trust is right alongside of faith. Trust is right alongside of faith. Oh boy, we had a good time this past Sunday when we talked about how to flow in the power of prayer. As we begin to flow these next several uh, sermons, Pastor, I'm going to come and talk to you about the different types of prayer. There's seven of them about the different types of prayer and how to flow in those different types of prayer and how to make them manifest for you. In so doing, uh, we talked about the first one was the power of praying in faith. Thanks, I have to tell you, whew, I prayed in faith this, this week, and I got two testimonies I'm going to bring to the church on Sunday. I got two testimonies, and if you've been praying with faith, God has blessed you tremendously this week, that you're going to have a testimony as well. But I've been doing what I'm trying to teach you to do, and thanks, it's working for me. So I got two testimonies I want to talk to you about on Sunday. So today, we're going to talk about the power of of trust the power of trust and because of that watch this cursed is the man who trusts in man who make it flesh his strength and so when you begin to try to make flesh your strength jeremiah 48 and 7 says for you have trust in your own works and your own treasures and you also shall be taken so when you trust in your own works in your own treasures, the money you've accumulated, the sex that you accumulated, you think that it was you that did that. You don't give God no credit, no glorification, no justification. You always say it because I did this and I did that. You begin to say I did this and I met all the right people and I did this and you know and I worked hard and I did all this. But you gave God no credit. You gave God no strength and and making you successful. So the Bible says. Cursed is the man who trusts in man, who makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert. So in other words, your trust and your success is going to become mobile. It's going to become a vehicle that's going to eventually run away from you. <laughs> it's going to become mobile. It's going to become a vehicle that's going to eventually run away from you. Why? Because your trust was not in God who established your situation, but it was in that vehicle that, that you put yourself into, that you was driving the wheel, and now your success, even though it could be abundantly right now, because your heart is not steadfast, unmovable, or bounding in the work of God, now you have not established a relationship or a trust in God that got you there. So now here come your 
vehicle to pull your success, to pull you into a different direction. That's why he said, you'll be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes. You will not be able to see when good comes because good will come from the joy of the Lord. Good will come from you giving God the praise. And good will come when you begin to humble yourself under the mighty hands of God. That's when good will come. But when you are all prideful and got your chest stuck high and got your head stuck high and said, it's because I've done this and because I've made this happen and because I worked hard and because I toiled real, real hard and because I came on the grind every morning, you are not putting trust in God. You're putting trust in you. Woo! But you shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. Okay, we're at uh, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 6 says, And shall not see when good come, but shall inherit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. Which means that we all are going to become successful at some point in your life. But if it's not rooted and grounded in God, then you're going to move in a direction that's not of God. And now you're going to be in a salt place. You're in salt place is a very bitter place. And that you're going to end up there. And the Bible says he will take, he will confine the what the foolish and give it to the wise. He will confine the foolish and give it to the wise. So because of that, what is he saying? I'm going to see that my people who are called by my name, who have humbled themselves, pray and seek their face, turn from their wicked ways, then they shall, he will, He'll, he will pray and he will heal, heal from, he will hear their prayers and he will heal the land. In other words, because we've humbled ourselves under the mighty hand of God, he's going to strengthen us in time of trouble. And when he strengthens us in time of trouble into this salt land where it's not inhabited, there's going to be a flow. There's going to be a flow of finance. There's going to be a river that's going to begin to happen that's going to uh, uh, flourish you and strengthen you. And make you better at what you do. Because when you are being cursed because you're trusting in man, you're trusting in yourself, then you have to realize even as a man, you have limited capabilities. And even the person that you're trying to allow to, to be your mentor, and now they become the person that you're trusting in to lead and guide you to success, they become your little gods. And now because they're your little gods, and you see, they think they have all the answers, and they truly are saying, I got this success because I made it happen. So now you feel like if I if I talk with them, they become my mentors, and they give me what they've done to become successful, then I too will become successful. But your trust is in man and not in God. God says in Jeremiah 29 and 11, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you and give you a good life, a, fresh, a, 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 a great life. God wants to bless us. And so when we move away from Jeremiah 29 and 11, we begin to move in the direction of uh, actually giving man our trust. But watch this. Verse 7 says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Isaiah 33 and 2 tells us, Oh Lord, be gracious to us. We have waited for you. Be their arm every morning. Our salvation also in the time of trouble. Be thou arm every morning. Our salvation in time of trouble. That was in uh, Isaiah 33 and 2. You see, when you begin to trust in the Lord, he, He's going to begin to bless you. Isaiah 33 and 2. He is going to bless you. But let me back up. I want you to hear something. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9 says, For we are God's fellow workmen. We are God's field. We are God's building. We belong to God. We belong to God. We are God's fellow workers. We are God's field. We are God's building. So God has built this temple so that we will be able to praise him. We will be able to be blessed by him. And we will be able to, uh, that he could trust us to do the things that he's purposed us to do. But 1 Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 3, 22 and 23 tells us that whether Paul or Apostle or Cephas 
or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours and you are Christ and Christ is God. So what did I just tell you? You don't need to look to a man to be successful. You got to have your trust in God. God says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Empowered is the man who trusts in God. And so when you begin to get your success, when you begin to move with success and your trust was in God, you believed in God to get you where you were, where you were going, thanks you're going to be you're going to become more successful, more powerful, more triumphant. Why? Because your trust was in God. Your and he says blessed was simply means empowered is the man who trusts in the Lord. So because you have been empowered, hear me now. First Corinthians three twenty two and twenty three says. Because you have been empowered, it says, whether Paul or Apostle or Cyprus or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. So he has said, I'm going to give you all of this if you trust in me because I'm going to empower you. And then in verse 23, he says, and you are Christ and Christ is. Is God's. So we are in Jesus. Jesus is in God. So everything that we go to do, oh my God, let this mind that is in Christ Jesus be also inside of you. So trust is you truly believing regardless as to what somebody said, regardless as to what somebody have done to you, and regardless of what you're going through in your life. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not into your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him. He will direct your path. What am I talking about? Trust in the Lord. Lean not into your own understanding. Because sometimes your own understanding will put you in the flesh. It will have you doubting God. Not only that, but it will have you doubting who you are. It will have you doubting your own abilities. It will have you doubting your own power and will for nature. It will, it will have you doubting if you have the stamina to sustain where you are. And so when you get to the point where you have the power to doubt you and the stamina that you have <clears throat> already inside of you, then you're going to begin to uh, uh, come against you inside of you and there's a beast inside of you there's an enemy inside of you that's trying to prevent you from being the most powerful you that's possible that beast and that enemy is saying hey go to brother so and so he have all the answers look at sister so and so she's successful run over and talk to her but my my conversation with you tonight is trust in the lord with all thy heart Lean not into our own understanding. So you don't really need to get your business card, get a hundred of them, and begin to pass them out to everybody, hoping that somebody with some type of connection call you. That's not what you need. You just need to get on your knees, pray, leave it all to God, and let him help you. But 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20 says, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you? whom you have from God, and you are not your own, for you were brought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So saints, we was brought, we was purchased. Christ died for us, that we should have everlasting life. And so since Christ died for us, that we should have everlasting life, he has given us the authority to conquer what's coming against us. He has given us power to triumph over anything that's trying to prevent us. My brother, my sister, there is so much power in you. There is so much success in you. There is so much strength in you. But fatigue is causing that strength to dwindle. Failure is causing that success to wonder if it's ever going to show up at your door and not. And hatred is stopping the love of God in your life because of things that transpired between you and another. So you got to get rid of hatred. You got to get rid of this thing that's going to prevent you from receiving the fullness of the joy of God. And you certainly got to get rid of fatigue. 
Because fatigue will make a coward out of you. Fatigue will make you not want to go do nothing. Fatigue will make you sit right on that chair and have your do nothing about you. But I'm coming to encourage you tonight to let you know that you were purchased with a price. And the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God. And you are not your own, for you were brought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which is from God. God will bless you. He wants to help each and every one of us. For look at verse 7. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord, for he shall be like a tree planted by the water. Craig God Almighty, if you are a tree and you're planted by the water, have you ever seen trees planted by the river? Man, you can lean on them all day and they won't fall. You can do whatever you want to do. You can cut them and they'll still be hesitant before they hit the ground. Why? Because they are filled with nourishment. They have everything they need in order to survive. Everything they needed in order to strive. You look at those trees and you have to hold your head back because of the power that God has placed in that tree. Some of them is 100 feet tall, 50 feet tall, 60 feet tall. Why? Because there was a tree planted by the water which gave them all the nourishments they need in order to be successful. What am I saying to you? Because your hope is in God and because you trust in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you are just like that tree planted by the water. All the nourishment is in you to be successful, to begin to flourish, and to begin to grow and blossom and have some of the prettiest limbs on you that's ever happening, have some of the prettiest leaves on you. Yes, I compared you to a tree because there is a branch about you. Everything, the Bible says that everything that's uh, planted by God, he pruneth. And when he begins to prune that tree, everything that's not of him, he begins to cut it back and throw it away. Because he don't want anything in you that's not of him that's preventing you from flourishing. You are a tree. You are a tree. And God is using you to begin to be by the rivers of water so that you can flourish. So see, sickness is trying its hardest to prevent you from being the best you that you could possibly be. Frustration is trying its hardest to be just like them bugs that get on the trees, just like them things that try to come against the tree to prevent it from growing. No, nah, no, nah, that's what they're trying to do to you. Bugs is trying to eat you up. Those are those spirits that's trying to come at you and prevent you. But God is going to add some more fertilizer that's going to take away all of that. He's going to bring down a rain that's going to wash all of that bugs away from his tree because that tree is flourished by the water and it has all the nourishment that he has. I'm talking about the power of trust. I'm talking about the power of trust. I'm talking about the power of trust that God says, if you just trust in me, I will bless you. I will work it out. I will give you hope. Then he said, for he shall be like a tree planted by the water, which spread out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes. You're not going to be afraid when famine comes. You're not going to be afraid when your circumstances are so jacked up from the flow up. You don't understand how you're going to get out of this situation. You're not going to be afraid of that. You're not going to be afraid of the situations. You know the ones that happen on your job that gets on your nerves and you want to put your hands around and choke them. But he's not going to allow you to even get to that point because he says you're not going to fear when the heat comes. But its leaves will be green. Hot somebody. Okay, yeah, I said it. Hot somebody. I, said, I went back south on you, y'all. I'm right here from Fairfield. Hot somebody. What he's saying is, my God, that you will not fear when heat comes but its leaves will be green. Even in the wintertime, when everything looks like it's drying up and it becomes crisp and has no more life about it, even when hard times begin to happen to you and it looks like there's no nourishments coming, no financial blessings, no miracles, nothing is happening for you, even through those times, when your trust is in God, he will bless you through the winter. Bless you through the fall, through the spring, through the summer. He says, I'm going to bless you so much that you're not even going to know what the weather looks like. Because I am going to bless you that you don't even have to worry about when it's fall and when it's winter. Because you're going to have enough to sustain you. Now watch this. That sustain or to sustain you doesn't necessarily mean God is going to give you a million dollars to get through this situation. 
Because when you have Jesus in your in your field, and when you have Jesus building you, you don't need a million dollars. You just need trust. And he'll give you everything your heart desires, according to John 15 and verse 7. He said, if you abide in me and my word remain in you, I'll give you your heart desire. So whatever it is that you truly desire, abide in Jesus. Trust in Jesus. He'll give you your heart desire. He said in Hebrews 6 and 18, he says, I swore on two immutable things. It's impossible for me to lie. So if he can't lie, he said, I will bless you. He said, I will work it out. He said, I will make your ends meet. He said, I will give you your heart desire. We got to trust in him. Now, Satan will send his antics in and try to prevent us from truly trusting in God. Because of the, because of the circumstances and situations that has come against us, he will try to prevent us from trusting in God. But God says, hold your head up. And realize that I am God. I made the heaven. I made the hurt. It was me that made him. I created life. I created death. I created everything in this world. It was because of me. Great God Almighty, all are yours. And you are Christ. And Christ is in you. He says, whether Paul or Paul or Cephas or word or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. And you are Christ. And Christ is God. Everything that you heart desires lies within your trust in God. All right. Say that again, Pastor. Everything that you desire to be successful in, it all lies within your trust for God. Do you really trust him? Do you have faith in him? Now he's going to do what he says he's going to do. Ah, you can't look at what the world is doing. You can't look at what's coming against you. You can't look at what's stopping you. You can look at it and realize that's just a stumbling block. That's just a hindrance. That's just something trying to prevent me. But Lord, I got to trust in you. Lord, I got to lean on you because I don't have nothing else left. I don't have nothing else left, God. My leaning post has fallen. I just need to believe in you now. I need a leaning post. Great God. For fatigue has become me. My knowledge has reached its limit. I don't know what to do or what to say. I don't even know what to pray for that I ought. So God, I have no other direction to run except for you. Because see, I've done all I know to do on this side. I've done all I know to do in this relationship and it's still failing. I've done all I know to do uh, at the job and see like I just can't get it right. I've done all I know to do, Father, to be more friendly so I can befriend people, but it seems like I'm always an outcast and things is, consist is consistently coming at me from all angles and I just don't quite understand what's going on with me. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not into thy own understandings, but in all thy ways acknowledge him. He'll direct your path. See, you've been directing your path too long. Let God direct you. Let God help you. See, because see, cause when God directs your path, sometimes it's not going to be comfortable. And it's not going to be comfortable because he's taking you from what's common to you. And he's taking you from what's easy for you. And he's taking you from what you are used to. So when God begins to lead your path, when he begins to lead you, he begins to prune you. He begins to separate you from the loved ones. Separate you from people. Separate you from your common thing that you like to do. God will begin to move you, but he's going to begin to prune you. And he's going to begin to separate you. Then he says, but then he says, You'll, you'll, uh, uh, which, you'll be like the tree planted by the water, which spreads its roots by the river and will not fear it when heat comes, but its leaves will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. So that means that when you begin to trust in God, things are going to begin to fall apart around you. Things are going to begin to happen towards you, but you are not going to yield fruit. You're not going to stop yielding fruit in the drought. And famine. 
and things that's coming. Even with this COVID-19 thing that's happening against us, this virus, this plague, this spirit, I call it, is trying to prevent us. But even through that pandemic, look how God sustained you. Even through this pandemic, look how God sustained you. Even some of us who contact and contract COVID-19, look how God sustain us. He said, Woo, you will not cease to yield in fruit and be not anxious in the year of drought. This is the year of drought. COVID-19 is happening. Flu season is happening. Monkey pox is happening. All type of stuff is coming at us, nor will we cease from yielding fruit. So in this drought, in this season, in this thing that's keep rearing its head, and let me help you, monkeypox is not going to be the last one. There's more to come behind it. But God said, if you just trust in me, he said, I'll sustain you, I will bless you, and in the midst of all of this mess, this chaos that's coming, he said, you will not cease from yielding fruit. All right, let's get right here. Let's get right here. Let's talk about this, saints. Oh, my goodness. Look at uh, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. The heart is a deceitful. The heart is deceitful. Above all things, and desperately wicked. The other translation says, incurably sick. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. So sometimes we are in church, we're in church with some people. We say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, praise the Lord. They say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, praise the Lord. They got their outer suit, some of them they're adorned, and they look good, and they, they, they can say hallelujah like some of the best of them, give God the praise like some of the best of them, and they end up shouting like some of the prettiest best ever seen and when they leave there here they go they can't even get in the car get out of the parking lot good but when they talk about sister so and so talk about brother so and so yo hold on now just an hour ago 30 minutes ago 10 minutes ago you was giving god the praise you were loving on jesus and now you are backstabbing and backbiting your friend the one that was in there beside you giving God the praise. How can you do that? Because the heart is deceitful above all things. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So the water people is in there praising God and falling all over the floor and foaming at the mouth, uh, they're going through a situation that they need something to talk about and when they get themselves in the car at home, they dial to somebody and want to talk about brother so and so or sister so and so, you see this and you see that and instead of going into the secret closet and praying the prayer of faith for that brother or for that sister, instead of doing that, we began to gossip, backbite dissension lasciviousness, totally out of control. The heart is a deceitful thing and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Oh my God. I said, it's right here in the Bible. Look at it. Jeremiah 17 verse 9 in the middle of it. Who can know it? Because the, the heart is lies within us. So we can't physically see the heart unless it was taken out. But while it's pumping inside of your body, you can't physically see the heart. But what's in the heart is what's coming out of people. And so if your heart is pure and your heart is clean and your heart has been circumcised, guess what? The people will be able to see how you are functioning in the arena of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Not only will you be transparent, but you would be welcomed because there's going to be a trueness about you, and there's not going to be anything phony about you, and then they're going to begin to say, man, Sister So-and-So was on fire today. Boy, I wish I could have what Sister So-and-So was having. Man, Brother So-and-So was on fire today. Man, he was all over the place shouting and giving God the praise. I wish I could have that. See, that's how you should be praying and talking about your brother and your sister. Instead of beating them down, we're just supposed to be admonishing them. We're just supposed to be lifting them up. We're supposed to be uh, praying for them and giving God the praise for that brother and that sister. But he says, who could know him? But watch this, saints. 
For those of you that's thinking you're fooling somebody, those of you that don't have your heart circumcised just right, and those of you that thinks that God does not know and understand what you're going through, look at this particular scripture, chapter 10, Jeremiah 17 and chapter 10. I, the Lord, I search your heart. And watch this. I test your mind. So God is testing you. <laughs> God is testing you to see how you're going to think, how you're going to carry yourself. How are you going to handle yourself? Because if you be about God's business and you be about Jesus' business, then he's going to bless you mightily. But if you have a sinful nature embedded into your heart, it's going to be manifest through your mouth, through your mannerism, and through your characteristics. It's going to be manifest through your heart, through your mouth, through your mannerism, and through your characteristics. And God says, I test the mind even to give to every man according to his ways. So some of us are not getting blessed because your heart is not pure. Oh, I, I, I don't want to bring that to you tonight, but I got to be transparent. I, I can't, I got to give it to you uncut. Even to give to every man according to his ways and according to the fruits of his doings. God says, I test the mind even to give to every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So what are you doing to admonish Jesus? What are you doing to help your brother? What are you doing to help your neighbor? What are you doing to help your church? Oh, pastor, that's a sore, that's a sore subject. Some of us won't even come back to church. Some of us are making up excuses and reasons why we can't be at church. Oh, you did all you could do on Saturday night but couldn't get up on Sunday morning to come and praise and admonish God. Well, Pastor, I can pray at home. Yes, you can. Pastor, I can look at TV at home. Yes, you can. But the Bible says how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. It's like the perfect oil that ran down Aaron beard. Good gracious, it's, it's a sanctified time when we as like-minded believers come under the roof of God. And we're praying and we're giving him praise and, and we're, we're thanking God for what he's done and who he's done. Because the Bible says that on the day of Pentecost, when everybody was on one accord, he says the Holy Spirit came down in that place. And people begin to speak with clovers of tongues. Why? Because they was all, all on the same sheet of music. They was in the same place. They wasn't sitting in their homes looking at TV. They wouldn't listen to the phone and listen to the radio. They was at church. So we've made up too many excuses why we can't get to church. Thanks, I'm telling you, there's a deliverance in the atmosphere of people praising God. Get yourself back together and get to church. I know you can pray wherever you are. I know you can talk to God wherever you are. But there is a change of deliverance when you are under the confidence of the power of of the trust of Jesus, all on one accord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, I know I stepped on some toes there, and that's okay, but I got to tell you the truth, because God says, I'm going to, to, to give to every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. What are you doing to help the church? What are you doing to bless the church? What are you doing to bring God into your situation. He says, I test the mind. So God knows what you're thinking. God knows how you feel. I don't want to go to church. I don't need to go to church. I don't feel like getting up. You know what? I, I woke up about five times last night. I'm just tired. I'm not going to church. And that began to start a trend of you not going to church for months at a time. Satan is deceiving you into getting the blessing that you need to receive. Because prior to you getting to that mindset, you was in church and God was blessing you. He was moving stones. He was working things out for you. Why? Because you was in the presence of people that, gov that is governed by God. And God begins to bless them. And 
Because you was there in the midst of that atmosphere, that anointing fell on you, and he began to bless you because you was in the midst of like-minded people. Guess what? You was in a like-minded at that particular point in time, and because of that, God says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to work it out for you. I'm going to deliver you. Saints, there's too many times that we give way to, I don't feel like going to church this morning. And then when you're looking at it on TV, you don't really fully pay it any attention. <laughs> it got quiet on you because he says, I test the mind, even to give to every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Past Sunday in church, I taught the saints how to pray the prayer of faith, how to pray the prayer of faith. Go back and look at that recording. Go back and look at it. Why? Because saints, I prayed that prayer of faith diligently this week. Diligently. And every time I pray the way I'm teaching you to pray, saints, he's moving. He's doing things. He's working it out. Because I have to trust in God. I have no other way. I have no other recourse. I have nothing else that I have to lose. I don't want to lose nothing else. So I have to pray in faith Trusting that God is going to move on my behalf and sex, he is showing me that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. I am encouraging you. I'm almost on my knees begging you to say, okay, God, I give you all of me. Why? Because I need to see more manifestation coming out of the people of Embrace Hope to say, Pastor, I prayed in faith. And I prayed in trust. And I know what you're saying because God blessed me as well. In the mighty name of Jesus. And listen, if you're not a member of Embrace Hope, embrace what I'm saying to you tonight. That if you pray the prayer of faith and believe it and trust in God, he will open up doors that you won't have room enough to receive. He will pour out windows. He will pour out resources. He will pour out empowerment. He will pour out blessings. If you're not a member of Embrace Hope, Embrace what I'm saying to you tonight to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding because your own understanding, it says here, the heart is a deceitful thing above all. And so if you lean to your own understanding, you're leaning towards a heart that's desperately wicked. And if your heart is desperately wicked, he says, who can know it? What he's saying to you is, if you do not lean to trust in God, you're going to trust in your own mindset. And when you trust in your own mindset, you are leaning toward wickedness. If you're leaning towards wickedness, you're all the way back up to verse 5 where it says, Cursed is the man who trusts in man. Oh my God. I'm trying to break this thing down to you so that you can fully understand that when you don't put your trust in God, you put your trust in man. And man is, is just, well, put your trust in Satan. But you are not that. You are powerful. You are strong. You're absolutely, you're absolutely worthy to be praised. You're absolutely worthy. And so watch this. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That was Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will, he says, yes, I will help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's the God we serve. My God, that's the God we serve. So he says, I test your mind to see what's in it. Okay, if God was to test your mind right now, what would he find out? <laughs> what would he find out? You mad about this? Desperately angry about that? Want to bottle your fist and throw it and let it hit wherever it hit? What would he find out? Will he find out purity? Will he find out, Lord, I just want to be the best me that I could possibly be. What would he find out? I hate her, I hate him. What will God find out? Lord, I'm doing my best to be my best for you. Work it out for me, Father. That's what he'll find out in your heart. That you're trying to do the best you can with what you got. And when he find out and they look at your heart. And then in your heart you are doing things to bless people. Doing things to give God the praise. You're doing things like praying in faith. 
so that God will begin to move you. God says, I take pleasure in the prosperity of my people. God wants to prosper us. God wants to bless us. God wants to strengthen us. And God wants to give us our heart desire. Oh my goodness, my brother and my sister, why are you falling short? Why are you not making it in? Why are you falling to this desperately wicked heart of your own mindset? The heart is a deceitful thing. Who can know it? But God says, I test the mind even to give every man according to his ways. What are your ways? Is your ways like your daddy? Because you can look like your daddy, so you will act like your daddy. You're just going to be just like your daddy. You look like your mama. You act just like your mama. You're going to be just, you want to end up just like your mama because you look for it. The devil is a liar. I, I rebuke generational curses. I rebuke character that's going to come against the people of God. I rebuke, I rebuke, I rebuke you being around people that's going to prevent you from being the most powerful you that could possibly be. I rebuke people that's going to come against you, come against your good character. In the, mighty, in the mighty name of Jesus. Because when you be around evil people and you're working around evil people and you're in the confines of evil people, it's going to corrupt your moral, your morals, your good morals because you're dumbing down yourself just to be with them. You're dumbing down yourself just to be accepted by them. But check this out. Shouldn't they be dumbing down themselves to be accepted? By you, because you are being pushed by God. You are being presented by God. You are God's people. You are a building that God built. You are God's fellow worker. You are God's field. You are God's building. It's time for you to stop dumbing down yourself and become the best you that you could possibly be. And those that, that need to be raised up, they can see who you are, and then they can come to you and ask you, hey, what must I do to be saved? Not fall apart every time circumstances, situations happen, that you want to go into a corner and ball up and put covers over your head, thinking that nothing in this world matters anymore. The devil is a liar. We're going to come against that in the mighty name of Jesus. You're going to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. You're going to be strengthened like never before. I come to you and I prophesy to you right now. That you shall be strong. You shall be strength. Fatigue is going to leave you. People are going to begin to come to you and help you get to where you're trying to be. Hear me now. Your marriage is going to become strengthened because you gave away all the things that belong to you. Now it's time to get you back together. Your children are going to become healed because you're going to change your mindset. You're going to strengthen your mindset. People are going to run to you. Why? Because the light of God is going to begin to shine through you. And they're going to begin to ask you, hey, my sister, hey, my brother, there's something different about you. And that's your doorway to tell them about your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God says, I am going to bless you according to the fruit of your doings. Today, I'm prophesying to you, you will change. You shall change. And if you do, hear this old boy speaking to you tonight. Things will look up to you. Your finances will begin to flourish. Your health will begin to get better. Some of them pills you're taking, it's going to begin to be washed away. Great God Almighty, get back in there. Some of the pills you're going to be taking, all of the pills that you're going to be taking, some of us are going to take them because we feel like this is the rest of my life. But God can heal you. God can strengthen you. God can work it out. Deliverance is for you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And all you got to do, all you have to do is begin to put your trust in Jesus. Jobs are going to begin to open for you. I know you apply for a loan. All you got to do is trust in Jesus. And with that loan that you just applied for, I want you to pray the prayer of faith. But when you pray the prayer of faith, add in Mark 9 and 23. And Jesus said to him, if you could just believe, all things are possible to him that believe. So when you apply for that loan, you know the loan you're trying to get to make things work out for you. Apply Mark 9 and 11. And when you do that, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding because your own understanding is going to prevent the prophecy that I'm telling you tonight. 
If you lean to Jesus and begin to trust in the Lord, watch him move on that loan. Watch him change. And they're going to say, hey, you had this thing happen to you. You had that thing happen to you. But a new rule came out that we can not even look at these things and begin to bless you with that loan. What am I saying? Miraculous signs and wonders shall follow those that truly believe. Saints, if you believe in God, he'll work it out for you. He'll give you your heart desire. He'll open up doors like no one ever opened up before. Your trust should never be in man, but you shall be trusting in God as he begin to bless you, as he begin to work it out. Sex, he's blessing me. He has no respect of person. He will bless you. He will strengthen you, and he will give you your heart desire, but you have to believe. You can't trust in your ways no more. you got to come to Jesus because he says, according to the fruits of your doing, he said, I'm going to bless you according to the fruits of your doing. I'm going to bless you to give to every man according to his ways. Are your ways pleasing in the sight of God when you are with nobody? Are your ways pleasing to the sight of God when you're gossiping to your best friend who's not going to tell nobody what you're talking about, but you're talking about it anyway? Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. I test the mind even to give, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruits of his doing. God says, I am going to bless you. I am going to do it. So he who gets rich but not by rights, it will leave him in the midst of his days. Look at now, look at now. I'm almost there, I'm almost there. Look at Jeremiah 17, all right, 17 and verse 11. So is he who gets rich, but not by right. It will leave him in the midst of his days, and at his end, he will be a fool. You hear that? As a potter's that brew that does not hatch, so is he who gets rich, but not by rights. It will leave him in the midst of days, and at his end, he will be a fool. <laughs> so in other words, if your trust is not in God, you're trying to do whatever you can do to sneak and guide and scheme and extort and do all that craziness, and you get a financial blessing, and you think you're rich, the Bible says it's going to leave you. I didn't say it. The Bible said it. It will leave him in the midst of his days. And at his end, he will be a fool. So God is saying, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not to our own understanding. But all thy ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. Saints, I'm crying to you tonight to tell you, change your ways. So God can bless you. Change what's in your heart so you can receive the fullness of the joy of Jesus. Change it, change it, change it, change it. And it's not going to be an easy thing because that harshness has been in you for a minute. Change it, change it, change it so God can give you the desires of your heart. You have too much coming to you that's going to bless you to begin to stop it, to begin to halt it because of your hatred, your dishonesty. Your exhaustion, your, your gossiping and your backbiting and all of this you're doing, all these blessings are coming your way, but you're stopping it in this trap because they can't come to an unclean vessel. Saints, I'm, I'm admonishing you tonight. I'm encouraging you tonight to understand. God is going to bless you. He wants to bless you, but he's looking at your ways. He's looking at your doings. Oh, I didn't say it. Don't get mad at me. It's in the Bible. It's in uh, Jeremiah 17 and 10. I, the Lord, I test the heart. I test the mind. So God is looking at us to strengthen us, to give us our heart desire. Now, hear me now. Hear me now. Hear me now. Not one of us is perfect. Not one of us is perfect. Not one of us is perfect. All have sinned and felt short of the glory. But the difference is... You know when you don't messed up, repent, <laughs> turn from your wicked ways, and he'll heal your land. He'll heal from heaven. He'll heal your land. That's all we got to do, saints. I'm so glad God gave us the ability to repent. Because after we repent, he says, turn from your wicked ways. So even if you've been gossiping about that one, 
Repent. Turn from your wicked ways. And guess what? Now that door is going to be open. Here come a floodgate of all the blessings that's been looking for you and trying to get there to you. Now he's going to pull back, you know, the screen though. You pull the screen though back. I know you don't know about the screen though. Open the door and then here they come running inside of your house. Blessings over here. Blessings over there. Blessings and blessings and blessings that you won't have room enough to receive. And why? Because you trust in God. Sex, I want to tell you that there is a power and trust. Trust and faith run side to side. Trust and faith run side to side. And when you have both of them working and operating at the same time, oh my God, look who you are. Look how God has blessed you. He restored the sight in a blind man because he had trust. He restored life in Lazarus because he had faith. Lazarus was a good man before he left for Israel, but he left, he became sick, and he came back because God allowed him to come back because God knew who he was before he left. Because God looked at his heart. He looked at his ways. He looked at Lazarus' doings. So he brought him back to life. Woo! He brought him back to life. What are you saying, Pastor? 1 Corinthians 3, 22 and 33 says, uh, world or life or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours. And you are Christ. And Christ belongs to God. Saints, we have all we need. All we got to do is get that heart right. Trust in the Lord. Watch him change the people that works around you. Hear me now. Hear me loud. The people that works around you, that means you no good. God is getting ready to expose them. He's going to expose them to the point where you're not going to, you have not heard the conversations that they've been holding about you. But he says, tonight, tell them, I am going to expose the people around them that's been trying to hurt them, that's been trying to come against them. I'm going to expose them in the mighty name of Jesus. So now your heart can be freed from that mess. I'm going to expose them in the mighty name of Jesus. Saints, I want you to understand that people that's been conjugating to talk about you, God is about to expose them. People that's been lying to you, God is about to expose them. People that means you hurt, God is about to expose them. People that's been trying to use witchcraft and wickedness against you, God is about to expose them. I'm prophesizing that to you tonight. God is about to expose them. And when God exposed them, don't think it's nothing new. Just know that you are walking in, that you're walking in right with God. Because he's looking at your heart. He, you are giving him praise. And God is about to expose him people. In the mighty name of Jesus. Woo! Go tomorrow and realize you're about to be exposed messing with me. <laughs> yep, realize who they're messing with. You are a child of God. God is going to expose them. And he's going to work it out for you like never before. In the mighty name of Jesus. Don't be amazed. Could be people very close to you that you thought was in your corner. But he's going to expose them so that you'll be able to see who they really are and do they really mean you any good. Now, saints, before we leave the air, I want to give you the opportunity to sow a seed into this ministry. We don't do nothing but do the right thing by the Lord in this ministry. This is a fertile ground. And because it's a fertile ground, God has begun to bless this ground like never before. God is causing things to happen in this ground. He's moving and he's causing things to work out like it should. In the mighty name of Jesus. And so, uh, he says here, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. I read it in church all the time, but I need to, uh, 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians, whatever, that we need to uh, begin to realize the God that we serve and the power of giving. And because we realize the power of giving, God will begin to bless us even more. For 2 Corinthians chapter 9 tells us, but I say to you, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purpose in his heart, not grudgingly nor of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiencies of all things may have an abundance for every good work. So here God is saying he loves a cheerful giver. 
So if you want to partner or you want to source seed in this ministry, go in on your phone and text 77977. And where you would put your text, you would put EH Give. And then you would send that and it would uh, send a link back to your phone and will give you the option to, you know, to give how you want to give. And so if you say, Pastor, I didn't, I didn't get all that. I still want the source seed. Then go with dollar sign, three, one, seven, seven, lowercase j, and send your blessing. And when you send your blessing, type in your message queue how you want it to flow. Whether it's tithes, offering, give to the praise team, whoever, and it'll get to where you place your, your blessing. I'm telling you, saints, God is blessing this church. He said this is fertile ground. And he's beginning to move like never before. So I give him praise, honor, and glory. Some people have been honoring Cash App. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for doing what you're doing for Embrace Hope International. So thank you, each and every one of you, for how you're bringing in your hard-end pay to begin to be blessed by God. There is a there is a blessing in your giving. He said that he's able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always have an all sufficiencies in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8. So I want to say thank you for tuning in tonight. Thank you for how God is going to continue to bless us tonight. Saints, I want to reiterate, there is a power in trust. There is a power of trust. There is a power in trust. And if you believe what I said tonight, pray that prayer of faith in the morning and watch how God begin to bless you. He's going to bless you mightily in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I want to see you on Sunday. I want the church to be filled. Grab somebody by the hand and say, hey, come go to church with me. That boy about to talk about another form of prayer. Come on in. Come on in. And listen, if you listen to me tonight, share this. What does say the Lord? So we give you praise, honor, and glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Is it working? No. And so we give God the praise. So thank you, thank you, thank you for what you've done. So go with me in prayer if you would. Heavenly Father, I thank you for who you are and for what you've done. I thank you for the blessing tonight. God, everyone that's listening to the sound of my voice, God, I ask for divine protection around them. I ask for divine healing around them. And I ask you for a agape strength of your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for who you are. Thank you for how you're blessed. Thank you for how you're going to work it out. You are an awesome God. You are an almighty God, and in you is eternal life. So because we come tonight, God, help us with our trust. Help us with doubt. Help us with our unbelief. But most of all, God, search our heart and know that we are in love with you, God, and we're strengthened by you. In the mighty name of Jesus. So you can have us tonight, God. Move like never before. And if you do that, we'll be so careful to give you the praise. Glory and the honor, it shall be yours. Jesus' mighty name, we pray and amen. Amen and amen. Listen, I want you to pray that prayer of faith. And I want to see you in church on Sunday. Come on now, come on now. I need you there. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and go in peace. Go in peace and know God have you. Go in peace.